Sabbath. It's a beautiful song. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I think it was his second time in this church. He's up here doing special music. Hello. Yeah. That steps on anybody's toes. Hello. That's what it was meant to do. Not by him, but by me. That was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. We are truly at the end times, brothers and sisters. It's time to get serious. I entitled this little talk, I can't even walk without holding your hand, because here I am, just had a birthday, I'm almost 50 years old, I'm just learning how to shave, you know, this morning in the shower. I heard it once said, you know, you got to be about 50 years old before you really learn how to shave. And I think that I'm almost there. I really do. Um, let us, this is just a side note here, I want you to turn to Amos real quick. It's that little teeny book that's very powerful with all the minor prophets that have major things to say. So they didn't have to use a lot of words. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. When you get there, just say amen. Okay. Now this might be reviewed from my Sabbath school class of last week, but the rest of them didn't hear it. What does this say? Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? Stop and consider that for a moment. Did you ever read anything? Or did anybody ever say that God was going to change the Sabbath day? No. That's a powerful verse then, there, there it is. Either that or God's a liar. Right there. Sabbath day has never been changed. Right there on that verse. Not to mention other verses, hundreds of other verses, like God says, I am the same today, yesterday, and forever. I do not change. Why does he not change? Because he's perfect. Right? Why would he need to change? It's you and me, brothers and sisters, that need to change. Because we ain't perfect. You know, I'm, I'm still learning every day to trust God. I, you know, yesterday I was supposed to be over in Orlando or Lake Mary to load. It was supposed to be a simple few pieces that I was supposed to load. And I was told to be there at noon. So I get there at noon. And I'm still not completely loaded by almost 4 o'clock. And I've got two other pickups today. One in Orlando and one up in Northern Beach. So I'm starting to stress, you know. I mean, the clock's ticking. What am I going to do here? So finally, they got two other guys that they loaded ahead of me. And they had to be under this special safety thing, and you have to tie up so you can get up there and tarp your load. You don't fall and all this stuff. And they told me, even though that they had got me loaded, that I couldn't, or when they loaded me, I couldn't tarp. But I had to wait even longer now. I says, look, man, I says, I just pull the pieces right over to my top deck. And I says, I'll throw my tarps over the stuff. And I says, then you load them on the trip. And the guy says, Ray, you've been doing this stuff too long. <laughs> Anyways, we got that done, got it loaded, signed the paperwork, and I'm getting ready to leave. And then they're screaming, whoa, wait, stop. We have more stuff. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I said, really, are you kidding me? I'm stressing out already. You know, I got this timetable I got to meet, this Sabbath's coming on. Now these people are telling me that everything I've got, I've got just enough room to make everything fit. Okay? Well, it won't be long. Oh, yeah. So they bring out this other stuff. I get it all tarped up, strapped up. I don't have room for it, but thankfully it's light enough I can manhandle it. And um, I had to wait longer for the paperwork. Finally, get all that done and I'm gone. Go over to Orlando, load that, I'm gone. Call the guy at 5 o'clock and tell him, look, I know I should be there, but I can't be there until 6. So will you wait for me? Sure. Bingo. I go. Then I get there, and these people, I don't know who was thinking what, but they said, uh, Oh yeah, we got four crates, three crates, four crates, those four crates. But we're going to have to, because the room you got, we're going to stack one on top. And 
And I said, okay, just show me these crates. So I go in there, and these crates are six feet two tall. I said, six feet two tall. And you're going to put one on top of the other one? That's high for a double drop. There's no way. This ain't happening. So I'm going, oh, no. You know, wasting my time. I'm still stressed. <laughs> so I told the guys, I said, look, it's going to take a few minutes, I says, but if you, if you really want me to haul this thing, I said, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to unload this stuff that I got on. Put your stuff on and then put that stuff on top of it. So that's what we did. But you know, how do you not stress? How do you just give it all to God? How do you, you know, I mean, that is so difficult for me to try to grasp. I've still got so much to learn about giving it to God. But it all worked out. It was all fine. And here I, I stressed over all this for what? I mean, you can only do what you can do anyway. So why why get all why fret it? I just don't know. I mean, does, does anybody else have this problem like I do? Because I mean, my job. I'm glad I'm not the only one because my job is like you are. Like I said, you can get there at noon and you sit for four hours. Just you know, what are you gonna do? It's either that I'm dead stopped or I hammer down. You know, feast or famine. <laughs> There's no middle ground. Anyways, any of you that don't know, I'm into trucking, and trucking is moments of, you know, hours, hours of boredom, coupled with moments of extreme panic, near-death experience. <laughs> That's what I mean. You know, some people like coffee; they get on the caffeine that way, and I just drive, man. It's a trip. The things I see, whew, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Anyways. I want to honor some people here today. How, how long have you, Bob, Marilyn, how long have you been going to this church? How long have you been going to this church? Oh, over 30 years. Over 30 years. Isn't that amazing? That's staying power, isn't it? Well, we've gotten those two benches outside in your honor, and we're going to have little plaques that are already being made. For one for Bob and one for Marilyn. We appreciate you guys so much. And everything that you do and being here is just amazing. You know, and, it, and another, I just want to give a testimony to, to trusting it. You know, it's not by power nor by strength, saith the Lord. But not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, right? Now, it wasn't that long ago, Bob was paid playing golf. And I've had the opportunity to go play golf again. You know? And Bob would sit there and he'd go, Man, you can hit that ball really far. And I can. Balls sail a long way. But you know what? At the end of the day, he still beats me. <laughs> he still beats me. Because his short game is so polished, he hits the ball and yet don't go too far. But boy, he don't waste a stroke. That man is getting to the hole. You know, and it's funny because I, I just, I'm glad that we've had that opportunity. And then he, then he takes me over to his house and he plays horseshoe with me and he whoops me. And I mean, just ding, ding, ding. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So then he takes me into his garage and shows me that he's the horseshoe champion of Michigan. So I said, well, thanks for sharing that. But we really appreciate Bob and Marilyn. I haven't played shuffleboard with them. I probably don't want to. <laughs> anyway, we really appreciate you guys, and, and just we miss you when you're when, when you're not around. Anyways, let's get into it here. Philippians two. I'm going to begin at verse two. Philippians two, chapter two, verse two. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Let not every man on his own things, but every man also to the things of others. 
This is true humility, isn't it? Don't we have to get to this place if we're going to win souls for Jesus Christ? Don't we have to be more concerned with other people than we do ourselves? Isn't that the true missionary spirit? You know, when nobody cares about you, is it possible for you to care about others? Yes. That's the true missionary spirit. You know? You take that little Hebrew girl that was telling Naaman, there's a God. There's a true God. And He heals people. You think about her. Here she is, this little slave girl, right? Put in with Naaman, because who else is going to serve this? He's got leprosy. You want to work with him? <laughs> you know, leprosy, it's a death sentence. Your fingers fall off, your arms fall off, you know? Who wants to be around that? But this, this little young lady, taken away from her home, very young, hello, what an upbringing, huh? Come on now. She's more concerned about her master than being resentful or hateful. Well, what does that teach us? We need, to be, we need to grow where we're planted, don't we? I mean, it doesn't matter what situation God puts us in. We have to do whatever work that He has before us. And if we always esteem others as better than ourselves, look, brothers and sisters, I know, I know my own heart. If you're honest about yourself, it's despicable. All right? Give me a break. I can't stop these, these thoughts from coming in. I, I don't even know where they come from sometimes. It's unbelievable. You know, but I see the mind like a pavilion outside, you know, that's all open. Right? Think of your mind that way. You can't stop a great big hawk from flying up in there, but you sure don't let him need to let him make a nest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Boot them out. The Lord has a great work that He wants us to do, but the only way we can do this work is to be empty of pride. Pride is the problem. Pride is the problem everywhere. Woman pride, man pride, I don't care what it is. You know, have you seen? It's so... We went from tattoos today to now people cut themselves. Have you seen this? This is the new tattoo. This is the new thing now. Instead of a tattoo, they, they intricately cut the skin in such a way to make whatever desired picture that you'd like to have. And I guess you're cooler if you do that than just put ink in your body. Even people ink their eyes. Have you seen that? Tattooed eyeballs. You can't change it. Once you've done it, it's done. You look like zombies, just all black. Listen to me. The devil is doing work today. These young people's minds are being bent and twisted. You might as well just burn your television as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing good on there. Everything slaps Jesus Christ right in the face. There's nothing decent. I don't care from what spectrum you come from. We have today people praise, I guess, what is it, Caitlyn Jenner now? It was Bruce Jenner? Becomes a woman. And, and, and they have this big to do and a cover of magazines and, and how courageous that can be. Yeah. You know, but yet we have this fellow like Tim Tebow. He mentioned Jesus Christ and ooh, he's, he's the worst thing going. Are you kidding me? This is the world we live in today, brothers and sisters. But look, everybody needs help. We can't judge our brothers and sisters. We need to reach out for them and help them. Look, Jesus says, I came to, to heal who? The sick or the healthy? The sick. the sick. And brothers and sisters, you know, I don't care who they are. They're all sick. Each and every one of us. The most righteous person in this room is sick. Okay? And we all need the healing touch of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why it says, let this mind be in you. 
that was in Jesus Christ. What is that mind? What is that mind? Selfless. Selfless. When are you most happy, brothers and sisters? When you are doing for others, right? And you've lost yourself. Am I telling the truth or what? I mean, how can you... God has put things in, in such a way. He says, the greatest among you will be your servant. Right? But don't we flip everything upside down in this world? It's unbelievable. It really is. The devil says, oh, just run out and be free. No rules. God says, get in here where there's rules and be free. Uh -huh. Hello? Uh -huh. But the devil's gotten everybody so duped. They're running so fast. It's like me yesterday. I, here I am. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I was fretting yesterday. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, man. I gotta go. I gotta go. But it all worked out. And I spent all that wasted time when I could have been just, I, I should have just been right into my Bible the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Think about that. If I'd have spent four hours just in my Bible, because you know what? There's nothing I can do anyway. But not Ray. No, I'd rather stand around and... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. How long have I got to wear? Like, I've just figured out how to shave. Maybe I'll get this figured out too. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's just it's mind-blowing. It really is. Let us continue. Where did I end? Eight? Where did I end? Four? Four. Okay. Let's start at five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Can you imagine that? What kind of humbleness are we talking about here? You think it's a humbleness like you and I understand? This is off the charts humbleness. We're talking very God taking on this flesh. Not for a day, not for 33 and a half years, but forever. You get that? The only one with scarred flesh in eternity will be the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about that. Alright? Whenever you see Him in heaven, he will have the prince and the weathered brow. That's amazing to me. I can't even understand that kind of love. Because you know what? When you come up and you slap me in the face, my first initial reaction is I want to slap you back. Really? That's who I am. Not that I would do it. But hey, doesn't the Bible say I'm just as guilty if I've thought it? Yes. You stop and think for a moment. Jesus, he didn't have a bad thought about anybody. If he did, they would have been vaporized. Are you kidding me? Not one. How do you think he was treated? He was hated. Oh, we know who our father is. Huh? What were they calling him? Are you, you kidding me? It's unbelievable. Wherefore, no, it's an eight. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. How much more painful could it get? Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Wherefore, wherefore we beloved, we, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in the presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why does it say that? Work out your own soul. Salvation with fear and trembling. Why does it say that? Should there be any fear and trembling before the Lord God? 
Should there be a heart searching? Hmm. Listen, brothers and sisters, if, if your sins are not put in the sanctuary, how can they be dealt with? How can they be forgiven? They can't be. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he offers this invitation. He says, give me. Give me your sins. I purchased them. They're mine. They don't belong to you. They don't belong to you. So you people that beat yourself up over salvation, stop doing that. Give it up. Give it to the Lord Jesus Christ. He purchased every single one of your sins on Calvary's cross. And they are not yours. They're His. Give Him what's His so that He can give you what He purchased for you. Amen. It's really that simple. It isn't rocket science. You know, we try to make everything so confusing and so hard. And well, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. No, that isn't the way Jesus has put it all together. You are the dearly beloved. Why else would he do what he did? For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do you believe that? Yes. Kind of weak. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. This is where it's at, brothers and sisters. You know, I don't know where that little paper is. I wanted to read that little thing that Ricky put in the bulletin. I think I lost mine. Yeah, if you don't mind. That's really good. I want you guys to know that uh, a few of the ladies here that are like some of our great cooks that are pretty much heavy hitters in the kitchen, they're not here today. So I'm not trying to tell anybody not to stay for food, but I'm just telling you that it may be a little slim pickings on the, uh, the, the main dishes. Okay? But we as Adventists, we can eat lots of vegetables, right? Amen. If you got this in your bulletin, this is what I want to go over. As the violence of the storm increased, trees, buildings, rocks, and earth were hurled in every direction. The terror of men and beasts was beyond description. Above the roar of the tempest was heard the wailing of a people that had despised the authority of God. Satan himself, who was compelled to remain in the midst of the warring elements, feared for his own existence. Can you just stop and think about that statement right there for a moment? Satan himself feared for his own existence. How bad do you think things were if he feared for his own existence? That had to be something. He had delighted to control so powerful a race and desired them to live to practice their abominations and continue their rebellion against the ruler of heaven. He now uttered imp imprecations against God, charging him with injustice and cruelty. Many of people, like Satan, blasphemed God, and had they been able, they would have torn him from the throne of power. Others were frantic with fear, stretching their hands towards the ark and pleading for admittance. But their entreaties were in vain. Conscience was at last aroused to know that there is a God who ruleth in the heavens. They called upon him earnestly, but his ear was not open to their cry. Why was his ear not open to their cry? Is this fair of God? Probation had closed. That's the key point there, isn't it? You know, everybody's worried about Jesus coming. They ought to be worried about probation closing. Because when the ark, when God shut the door of the ark, it sat there for seven days. It, judgment had been pronounced right there. It was finished. But it had rained. Seven days, the rain started. The same thing with Lot. When the angels came into Sodom and Gomorrah, 
when they pulled Lot into the house because these men were so wicked, and, they sh and the angels shut the door, now that was it. Fire and brimstone wasn't falling, but the door was shut, brothers and sisters. The door today is not far from being shut. Amen. And when that door is shut, it's done. It's finished. There's no more time. You know, the ten virgins, people talk about that story as Jesus coming. That's, that's really the shut door. When you stop and see that these five virgins come and they're knocking on the door, the door's been shut, and they're calling Jesus' name, and he says, I never knew you. Depart from me. I hope and pray that nobody in here would ever hear those words. We have to come while the door is open. Seek the Lord's face. This world is full of wickedness and full. I mean, they even teach the, the devil, I mean, when I say they. Okay, his minions. You teach people how to think. You just don't even realize how your mind is put into a certain thought process. Have you ever, have you ever done any of these things on the internet where some guy says he's doing these numbers and then colors and blah, 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 and all of a sudden you say exactly what he wanted you to say and it was in your own mind? You ever, you ever wonder how that works? Yeah. The, the things that they say and do are programming you. And you don't even realize you're being programmed. So what do you think it is for people that sit in front of that boob tube all day long? And they're programmed with all the filth and nastiness. <laughs> even the news. What is with the news? Are you kidding me? I don't care what news you like. Well, I like this news because it's better. Are you kidding me? All it is is what the devil's paraded up and down this world all day long. It's filth. I mean, I understand we live in the world. We can't just live under a rock. we got to know a little bit about what's going on. But give me a break. It's pitiful. And we, we, we put against one another. Well, I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm a liberal. I'm a conservative. What is all that? Are you kidding me? If you paid any attention, these people are all on the same team. I don't care what color tie they got. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. They're laughing all the way to the bank. Well, if you kept your finger there, I'm going to continue on. They called upon him earnestly, but his ear was not open to their cry. In that terrible hour, they saw that the transgression of God's law had caused their ruin. <sighs> to see it.